Get home. All right, three, two, one, let's go. Uh, what's your favorite fast food? Don. Fried chicken. Fried chicken. Where do you like your fried chicken, Don? Uh, KFC, I guess. KFC. Anyone agree or disagree that KFC is the best place for fried chicken? Popeyes. Why is Popeyes better? Because their fried chicken is good. Any other reasons? And then better biscuits. Biscuits. KFC's biscuits are really hard. I need a third reason. Right now in class, we are having a, a incredible historic debate on the merits of KFC versus Popeyes. Madeline is coming strong, arguing Popeyes because we don't just say Popeyes in an essay. We say because. Spicy chicken and biscuits. Can anybody give me a third reason, maybe, for Popeyes? Anybody at home? Anything else about Popeyes for the sake of making an argument, a three-part argument, even if you don't believe it? What does Popeyes have as their sides other than biscuits? Cajun fries. Cajun fries. There we go. You are not messing around. Cajun fries. Sophomore year of high school, Madeline Black can get away with Popeyes is the best fried chicken in the country because of their spicy chicken, their biscuits, and their Cajun fries. Three reasons. And I even do that first semester with some of my sophomores. A typical outline essay where you have three reasons and three paragraphs. Everybody with me? What are we trying to do in this class in regards to complexity? Something. All right, you're headed in the right direction. Don't get too far for me. Although KFC something. So does anyone want to defend Kentucky Fried Chicken? Anyone other than Don want to defend Kentucky Fried Chicken? Now, what do you think? Do you want to vote for one of these? I'd probably vote KFC. Why? They're better at combo deals. Combo <laughs> deal. Wow. Explain what you mean by combo deal. Well, like you can get a whole bucket of chicken. Like if you have a big group. I like this guy. He's thinking the way that I'm thinking, right? As someone who has a daughter headed to college, I'm looking for the deal, right? The combo bucket deal. Maybe inferior chicken, but you get more, right, for the dollar. I understand where you're going. KFC or Popeyes? I don't eat either of them, but... <laughs> uh, Based on the arguments that you've heard. right now is thrashing your Popeye's argument. Yeah, I'll go with KFC as well. Yeah. Why? I don't know. Maybe I'll, I'll take the combo deal as well. Yes, you're a man after my heart. Seconding the combo deal. We're going to come back to you. Uh, KFC. Woo! Oh, wow. What? <laughs> Why? Good mashed potatoes. Good mashed Oh, there we go. So we got mashed potatoes. So right now, where you are, I want you to type or write a complex thesis. You're exactly where we were going, Madeline. Combining these two. Although, and we're looking at one side of the argument from the other side. Although you're willing to admit, as hard it is, it is, that Madeline may be right about something. And the second part of that is obviously the argument itself. Great. That, that's a great example. Can I back up just a little bit? What is the idea, it's a poorly phrased question, what is the idea, Joey, of a complex thesis? What are we trying to do? We're trying to make sure that the reader understands that not everything is one way or the other. Yes. Not everything is one way or the other. Not everything is all A and not B. Excellent. Why do historians want complexity, Maddie? Why do they grade us on this? Because it's typically just more accurate. What do you History mean? is not straightforward with one correct answer. Yes, so it's what do you mean accurate? I acknowledge that. What do you mean accurate? Like, in order to describe what really happened, 
there's just not ever really in history one straightforward answer. So acknowledging that and fighting is. But but aren't there facts? There are. Can't we decide today when the Soviet Union ended? Sure. Don't we know the dates of when Reagan was president? Mm -hmm. Can't we decide specifically on the name of Gorbachev's policies? Do we know the name of the parties in Poland that led the resistance? Mm -hmm. Do we know what happened at Tiananmen Square? For Maddie Brown, we do know the answers. Those are all accurate. I mean, so we have the facts, but these essays are asking us for explanations, and explanations are usually a lot more complicated than just a list of facts. Excellent, and history is about explanation. History is about interpretation. History is about analysis. We could very easy, I could probably get a group of fourth graders in this district together and agree on all of the six facts. And if I gave them flashcards and things like that in a week or so to review, I could probably give them the test and they would have all of that memorized. That's not what advanced placement is for. It's the thinking, it's the argument. If you haven't already gotten out your computers, let's get out your computers, right? You, you've got to dig in, roll up your sleeves and provide the evidence that's here. So the structure of our lesson today is I'm gonna give you a jam board in just a second and I'm gonna ask you to pick one of these six things. If you're not sure, just pick one. It's kind of like voting with your name. Then I'm gonna run through all six of them. I'm gonna to try to do it as quick as I possibly can. Then we're gonna come back to it. And I wonder if your initial vote you're gonna stick with. I wonder if I can convince you or talk you into something. But ultimately the objective at the end of the class is you're gonna think of three ways or three reasons for why the Cold War ended but you're not gonna list the Cold War ended because of Gorbachev and Reagan. You're gonna say, although this one or two things, here's the real reason. And my hope is with this big of an intellectual crowd that we actually have an argument. So things about complexity, right? And some of us are still struggling there. Think about all these tricks. Think about all of these tools. Long-term versus short-term. Out of all six, what are relatively short amounts of time? Which of the six arguments are relatively short? Events, events in Afghanistan could be, the, but I, especially the um, the independence movement was like in Eastern Europe. Quicker, quicker, maybe. I could make an argument that fifty six in Hungary, sixty eight in Czechoslovakia. It's a little bit more ongoing. Reagan's only president for eight years. Gorbachev is only in control for five years, something along those lines. I would argue those are more short term. I would argue this is more long term. My comments here is you also could put capitalism into this argument. The strength of capitalism and the weakness of communism could be balanced here. Mm -hmm. So if I was reading James's essay and giving him feedback, although Gorbachev's reforms and the Soviet invasions uh, Afghanistan's, that's a relatively shorter period of time, 20 years, as opposed to the slow, steady rise of capitalism over 200 years. So one way to add sophistication, complexity, and understanding, short-term versus long-term. Nobody wants to make an argument for Reagan. Why? We all Why did you all, not include Reagan? We all love trickle-down economics. Uh -huh. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I can make an argument for it. That without Reagan's increase in spending, there wouldn't have been the increased militarization of the mm -hmm. Soviet Union ultimately was the cause of their economic collapse, including the need to militarize in Afghanistan, including the need to militarize to uh, oppress and keep the voices of Eastern independence movement suppressed and the continuation that goes on and on and eventually leading to Gorbachev's reform. Continuation, or what we're identifying is the relationship between these six ideas, right? So if I had a visual, I would ask you to get in six different places and then what we would do is we would look at the relationship between these two. 